Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Kingdom Conversations with Lanzine Lee. Gosh, I look short. I want to welcome you into my living room today and welcome you to what truly will be an epic conversation about the kingdom of God. My guest is uh, currently recording something else, and I believe he'll show up uh, sometime or another doing the, the whole of this broadcast. But regardless, we will continue on. What I do like is anytime you talk about the kingdom of God, it is absolutely going to be epic. It is going to give us the opportunities to listen and to hear things that the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us so that we can start to allow the changes that need to come into all of our lives to be able to conform to the image of Christ and to be able to minister uh, the grace of God that we have also been comforted with. So Having said that, I want to open in prayer. I want to say greetings to Apostle Tracy Carson and also to Miss G Force Geraldine Dory. And thank you uh, for joining today. And so let's go ahead and open in prayer. And uh, Apostle Calvin will join us when he can. If not, he's being rescheduled. <laughs> Father, thank you for today and for the the beauty of your holiness and the lovely opportunities that you grace us with. I thank you for you. I thank you for who you are to us. You are Father, you are Son, you are Governor, the Holy Spirit. You are so complete in in your excellence and in the marvelous ways that you have with us. I just, I really love how you are with us. I love how you love us, how you embrace us, how you keep us, and how you have provided for us everything that we have need of and that we get to spend our lives discovering these these gifts and these provisions from you and then to spend our lives also releasing it into the earth for others. You really do take very good care of your children. Sometimes we don't know that, but it is my prayer that as the days progress in this 2024 year, that the realization of just how great we have it with our so great God and the so great salvation permeates the atmosphere. It changes the lives of the people that we encounter, and it changes the face of this nation. I bless you, and I praise you, and I thank you for the power of your name and of your blood and of your word and of everything that is God, the power of your kingdom. Anoint the ears, the eyes, the hearts, the receivers of we, your people, Holy Spirit, to be able to hear what you have to say through me, through prayerfully our guest, and just as you speak through your word. You are so good. <laughs> and I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, he hasn't shown up yet, so I'm going to just kind of do an overture of things and, and be able to kind of share some things with you that pertain to the kingdom of God and even why I really admire and love and respect the senior council members of the loving Un of the loving unity movement. One of the things that I have found as I watch and I hear a lot of people can you uh, see my eyes just kind of open like that for a minute? The reason that they did it is like, oh my God, where are we going? Because I just got a hint of something I'm going to go ahead and say. And that's always fun to be daring. Okay. <laughs> um, what I love and admire about the senior council members of the Loving Unity Movement, and that does include the newest um, senior council member, uh, is the fact that these people have gone through epic battles. They have had to overcome death and life situations, financial hardships. I mean, you read about what the, what the Apostle Paul says in beatings and in this and in this and in this, and he just gives this whole list of things that you do not want to order at any life restaurant. Oh, yes, I'll take torture. Yes, I'll take torment. Yes, I'll take some persecution and some backbiting and some people trying to kill me. Yeah, these, these are all the things that I want, even die and then come back suddenly. I don't know anybody with half a brain or even a whole brain for that matter that is going to order that. This is what I want my life to consist of. We want adventure, but danger is good too. I like danger as I turn the pages of a book or watch it on a, on a film or something like that, but for myself, not so much. So 
those are some of the hallmarks of apostles and prophets, though. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They go through things. So do pastors. So do evangelists. So do teachers. Anybody that is called to ministry, anybody that is called to be a trailblazer is going to have an epic adventure. But the fact that these folks are still standing and standing strong, they combat this. There's a, a illness or a death or a this or a that that comes against them. Against their, It's not just physically, but against their mind, against their will, against their emotions. And they have to decide, I'm coming back. I'm going to stand. I'm going to fight. And they do. And they don't just stand and fight. They win. What they really said is, I'm going to take this victory and I am going to use it. And I'm going to use it as a weapon against the things that try to come against those that are on my watch. And so you just have to admire superheroes, which I do. And that's what I think of. Of I, I don't have their names all in front of me, but um, the senior council members of Loving Unity, uh, the apostles and the prophet that are there. And then I look around at the men and the women that go to the convergences or that are on the Zooms because every everyone doesn't gather all the ways in the same places, but the conversations that are had. And there's a difference you can tell when a veteran is speaking and when a novice is talking. And so when I listen to the veterans and I listen to the stories, it's the stories that really capture my attention. And they say them so casually as though they were in a cartoon. And I like to say this because it's so much fun to me, like a gathering of the, of the super squad, the super, the super, the super um, heroes, I guess they call them the superhumans. When they come together, yes, the snake bit me. Yes. This sickness came upon my body. Yes. This car accident occurred. Yes. This child, this was taken. Yes. This happened. And they dusted off like Paul, the apostle Paul, shaking off the serpent, the snake that bit him in the fire. But none of these things move me. And why I find this so epic and amazing is because that is the essence and that is the flavor and that is the power of the kingdom of God. Not so much with a director yelling, cut, print. Okay, we got that one. Now let's go on to the next scene. It's not like that. This is a tapestry of life. Each and every one of us in the kingdom of God, we are a part of a huge woven quilt or tapestry, a, a beautiful photo, family picture of what it's like to be a son of God. You can call us also daughters of God in the earth. This is what it's like to be of royal heritage, to have a brother that overcame everything that could ever uh, bring about destruction in our lives. And we have within ourselves the presence of the person that is able to overcome all. It should thrill you to know that when you go into a dangerous situation, not asking for that, but nevertheless, suddenly you find yourself in a quandary. Suddenly you find yourself backed up in a corner. Suddenly you find yourself surrounded by uh, maybe it's invisible spirits that are speaking and taunting and mocking. And it comes in terms of a lost job or an income, some uh, issues with your children, things that are going on in your ministry or in your business or in your finances or in your emotions. You feel lost. You feel abandoned. You feel, you feel what you feel. But then you do what he says to do. Because it's in us to overcome. And suddenly grace becomes more to you than just unmerited favor. It becomes a weapon of choice from the kingdom of God that you're using to wield victory, that you use to stand when you didn't think that you could, that you use to push when you didn't think that you could, that you use to keep going when you didn't think that you could or that you don't think that you can. You find, yes, I can, because that's when word starts to also uh, come in and invade the senses and the feelings. And word says, oh, but I can do all things through Christ because I'm not, it is not me of myself. It is Christ in me, the hope, the expectation, the manifestation of the glory, of the, of the power, of the accolades, of the divine presence of the almighty God. 
This is what I admire about people of God that know who their God is and do exploits for him. This is when you're on the ground and your head is down and you just don't know if you even want to get up. I remember hearing Brother Kenneth Hagin, a tape of his. I wasn't in a service, that service. But he was talking about the ABCs of faith. And he started to say something where he was talking about everything was against him. He said, and he's talking about stirring up the power and the gift on the inside of you. He said, but he couldn't stop. He said, because something on the inside. And he kept saying it's something on the inside of me just told me. Now, I'm not using it in the same context, but I just want to use those words for a minute. Something on the inside of me told me this is not the time to quit. Something on the inside of me told me this is the time to stand and take my stand. Something on the inside. And then he changed it. He goes, let me say, I should say someone, someone on the inside of me. Someone on the inside of me. In fact, it's the someone who I am inside of. Because our bodies, which is what we've talked about in this month of January, are the temple of the Holy Spirit, of the temple of the Holy Ghost. He abides in us. And therefore, ownership by way of the kingdom of God has taken place. I belong to him. I belong to him. I'm his, you see. And because of that, there is therefore this upward surge of the presence of the one who is inside of me and a reminder that before he's inside me, I'm in him and in him I can live and in him I move and in him I express the power of the kingdom. I express the joy. We, we have weapons of warfare that, <clears throat> excuse me, the scripture says are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Thoughts, attitudes, mindsets, emotions, feelings, things that want to hold on to us and hold us fast to a wrong belief, keep us mesmerized um, by uh, some kind of satanic, I, I say mesmerized because it's a, it's a hypnotic gaze that we're in a trance almost looking at what appears to be impossible and hearing the thoughts of a serpent type telling us that it is impossible. But then there's a stirring that happens on the inside of you. Look at that. I love when those little thumbs up things happen. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There's a stirring that starts to occur on the inside of you that says, no, I was actually born to overcome this thing. I was brought here into the earth to defeat this. I was not brought into this earth. I was not born again, born from above into this earth to be defeated by mere circumstances. That's not going to happen on his watch. These are really words, epic words that come from the kingdom of God. They can be said, they can be emulated, they can be scripted, in a movie and you'll hear your best heroes always say things like that. Not on my watch, not while I'm standing. That's um, one of my favorite lines from the Green Lantern in the era of Cartoon Network's version of um, the Justice League and the Justice League Unlimited. But let me tell you something. They can say it with it being scripted. But we say it because it's written in us to be. It's a different type of script. It's not a Hollywood script. It's not a Broadway script. It's not a community theater script. It's not even the script of somebody else that's trying to control your life. It is the spirit-controlled and spirit-led word that lets that reminds you that if you really are born from above. If you be a son of God or a daughter in the earth of God, if it be that the spirit of him that raised Jesus Christ from the dead abides in you, if it be that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, if it be that you are recognized by God as belonging to him, if it be, <laughs> and it goes on and on and on and on. You're catching what I'm saying, I, I believe then you can change the script of the world. You can change the script and the plans and the plots of the kingdoms of this world. 
and you can move it to become an epic victory that has been written in you to come forth from you that showcases the power and the majesty and the presence of the kingdom of God in earth as it is in heaven. So that's my introduction. Let's talk about this a little bit more because I'm I I started with saying that I see this as a it's it's legendary for apostles and prophets. Why did I open my eyes so wide earlier? Because there are people that like to go around calling themselves prophets. They like to call themselves apostles. They like to call themselves they don't really want to mess with uh being an evangelist, pastor, or teacher, because, you know, we're not glamorous, but, uh, <laughs> but they just, these wannabe apostles and these posturing uh, prophets that go around trying to, you know, do their internet stuff. Um, I, I think it's kind of like raiding or um, uh, they're like little predators that go around. They're pretending to be something that they can never deliver on because their, their history doesn't show the victories. It doesn't show the times that they were flat on their face or face in the mud, or they had, it felt like there was a demonic foot on their back and they wouldn't let it keep them down. They don't, they didn't pay the price to speak into your life. They didn't pay the price to release the words of the kingdom of God. They didn't go through the persecution. They weren't turned on by their own. They weren't brought, dragged out, you know, seeming like they're in a pinnacle and somebody pushes them over to see if they're going to fall and break on a cliff. They can't tell you the number of times they've been put back together again. And they're still speaking this word and they're still standing for what God has said. And they still stand for righteousness and oppose lawlessness. You see, you can't buy that, my love. You cannot pay dollar money for that kind of integrity or that kind of stand. You have to pay a price. You're going to have to, if you're called in ministry, whatever it be, and you be in the kingdom of God, you're going to have to understand whether you be a fivefold or ascension gift minister, or you're in marketplace, you're out there in those uh, kingdoms of this world. And yet you're there to represent the kingdom of God almighty. And you're going to face persecution. You're going to face it with the people that you go to church with. If they're not, if they haven't caught the message, they surely are going to turn on you. You're going to face it with your ethnic groups when you uh, tell them as much as I like being in my beautiful skin, whatever the color of the house that you live in, that is not my first allegiance. My allegiance is to the kingdom of God and its king, the king and his kingdom, the kingdom of God, not the kingdoms of this world. You will face persecution. You'll even, you'll face ridicule. You will be uh, chastised. You will be mocked sometimes. There's a price to pay if you're going to be one that is going to live the everyday life of the kingdom of God. Well, I didn't sign up for this. Yes, you did. Maybe you just didn't read the fine print. You signed up for it because you said that you want this. And trust me, there's nothing else worth having. And sometimes you will be misunderstood even by people that should know better. I mean, it's like, have I been with you so long and you, <laughs> you, still, you still think this way about me or you have these thoughts or whatever it might be? Yeah, that kind of goes with the territory. But what you do, what you do is you say, but that's, that's fine. I'm going to be opposed by lawlessness when I stand for righteousness. I am going to see that there are other spirits that it's almost like they line up and then they just come in like a bunch of, of uh, prey, uh, predatory birds or something. And they're going to come after you or things on land, things under the earth, things in the sea, whatever it happens to be. They're going to come through people and sometimes they'll just try to ma manifest as themselves. And what I want you to remember and I, I am putting scripture to all this. I'm speaking scripture as I go. But what I want you to remember is that you are a spirit that is made in the image and the likeness of the king of the kingdom of God. You have been given dominion power thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ to once again 
release God's kingdom come and God's will be done in the earth. You are specifically modeled and designed to be able to do possible things that others in this world would term as impossible. What they call impossible is to be able to release the power of God into a circumstance or a situation that man cannot solve on his own. That's what man calls impossible. If I can't do it, it cannot be done. That's the, that's the hallmark of humanity without God saying it's not possible for this child to be healed. It's not possible to find things that are lost. It's not possible to turn forsaken situations around. It's not possible to bring healing to a nation. It's not possible. And they'll go on and on and on and on and on. It's not possible for you to go from rags to riches and stay there. It's not possible for you to, with a, a third grade in education, it's not possible for you to helm a corporation. It's not possible. And on and on and on and on. They say, they say, they say, they say. But the kingdom that you come from, the kingdom of God that you are rooted in, found in, born from, born ab from above from, has placed in you unique skills designed specifically to overcome every impossibility with man because you are with God. Jesus said it this way, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. In Luke uh, I believe it is chapter one, if I'm thinking properly, because sometimes my brain gets ahead of me. Yes, it is. Um, in Luke chapter one, I believe it is when, when the angel came to Mary and he was speaking to this virgin girl and he told her that she was going to give birth um, to this child. He said, let me, I'm going to read it to you. Luke one twenty six. It says in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God and to a city of Galilee called or named Nazareth to a virgin spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name, Mary. And the angel came to her and he said, hail mighty favored or hail hi highly favored the Lord with you, blessed you amongst women. And when she saw she was troubled at his saying, she, her mind is turling. This was a thinking woman. You know this because as you look through, it says she pondered this in her heart and she's watching this and she's thinking. So her, she's highly intelligent and her mind is going and she's, she's casting in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Now it doesn't say that she was afraid of the angel in this particular case. Most of the time we read the angel says fear not, but we're here when he said it, he said, Mary, you don't need to fear in terms of what you're hearing me say. You don't need to be afraid of the words that I'm about to release to you because I have been sent to you to release destiny. And when he did, he said, you shall conceive in your womb and you shall bring forth a son and call his name Jesus. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom there of uh, his kingdom. There shall be no end. What I like about reading in this is that Mary was called out. She was pointed out as highly favored. She was told then what her assignment was going to be. From that point on, it was not about Mary. It was about the seed that Mary was carrying. It was about the message that Mary had been born into the earth to bring forth. And in her case, it was the living word of God in this seed form as this one, Jesus. And the angel said, when Mary asked the question, because she's thinking, hmm, well, I don't know a lot, but I do know that it's kind of necessary for me to be with somebody in order for me to be pregnant. And so she said to the angel, how shall this be? Because you know that I've never been with a man. I've never been touched in that way. And the angel said to her, he answered the question and he answered the questions that uh, the other questions so that he gave a final answer. He said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Nobody knew what that meant. What do you mean the Holy Ghost shall come uh, in, in such a way that I can be impregnated, which starts to open your mind to understand, wait a minute, every time there's a stirring of the Holy Spirit inside of me, there is a seed that needs to be nurtured because there's something more that's going to be released, something God wants to do. And so he said, <coughs> excuse me, and the power of the highest, meaning there's none higher. 
The highest is the is is the maximized possibility. There's nothing higher, no one greater, no no other alternative. There's no uh, substitute for the highest, the power of the highest. There's no power that can rise above it. There's no power that can chisel it down to size. This is it, baby. This is it. And he said, and it shall overshadow you. He shall come upon you. He shall encapsulate you. There's, there's some things that are, you're going to be transformed by this presence. Therefore, also that holy thing, which shall be born of thee, shall be called the son of God. And Mary, by the way, just so you understand, not on the same level, but the same type of power, a barren woman has been found to be with child and she is of your family. It is your cousin, Elizabeth. In fact, she's in her sixth month. They called her barren. They said her womb would never uh, carry a child. They said she was hopeless. They said she was too old. They said this about her and this about her and this about her and this about her. And they put her on a shelf, but God, but God had plans for her womb. And he had brought that forward to say in this season, in this era, now is the time that my plan begins to bloom and to blossom on the inside of your family for coming forth from your family within your cousin who they called barren, but God never called her barren. And I have to ask you, to check in with the Holy Ghost and find out what are you calling barren in your own life and in the life of, the, of this nation and in the life of the people around you or in the life of your ministry or your business or whatever. What are you saying will not grow anything, will not take a seed and will not come forth that God himself has not called by that same name? So you got to think about that. Are you naming things incorrectly? Are we calling using our power to call those things uh, what the world calls them instead of speaking them into the existence of what God has called. Because in this case, he said, this woman that everybody else wrote off, wrote off, God never did. And so God did in her what he wanted to do. She, this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. And then he said this, and what he released was a principle of the kingdom of God that we take to use uh, we use it as a weapon. This is the, the sheath of it. For he said, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. So that tells me that there was a sword with a, she with a sh uh, sheath on it. It was covered. And on the outside is written, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. But when you take that off, that cover off, and you're holding it, you're holding possible. With God, all things are possible. This is the possibility of my life. This is the power of grace. This is the power of truth and mercy and righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. This is the power of the kingdom of God that with God, with what he said, according to how he sees it, all things are possible. So the world says we don't, the kingdoms of this world, they say, well, we don't see how it can be done because we have not developed that technology yet. And with God, he says, but I am the technology that you have need of. I am the source of healing. I'm the source of truth. I am truth. I am everything that you have need of. Everything that pertains to true life, above the earth life, living in the earth as a, a living spirit in a body from a seated position of royal power executed into the earth. What is thy kingdom come? Thy will be done. It is the execution of royal power and dominion in the earth according to the words of the king and the owner of the very land that we live in because the earth belongs to God. So that's kind of the, the kind of thing that we're looking at. And I want to say hi to Dr. Denise. <laughs> Denise Myers, um, or and or Russell Myers, also to I see my sister prophet uh, Anita. Uh, Dwayne, and I see you, Miss Toby Taylor, and uh, everyone else. I wanted to say thank you, and Pastor Mark Fox. I saw your name briefly too, so I want to greet you all, as well as those that are watching from um, Afghanistan and wherever you happen to be. Welcome, and thank you so much for being here today. Can can you guys see this? The when they say that the greater one is in you, this is First John four four. You are of God, little children. Let's go go ahead and turn over there. First John four. Okay. This is a whole conversation 
where he's telling you to, you need to test the spirits that you're around. Well, we always try to interpret that as me testing the spirit by my flesh. Let me see if my feelers are out. Let me see how it feels because, mm, okay, I guess it might be okay. They look okay. They passed the smell test. It should be all right. No, you don't test the spirit uh, by by your flesh. But as a spirit, look in the realm of the spirit, look through the eyes of the Holy Spirit and find out, is this you or is it not? He said, beloved, believe not every spirit. And I, I'm telling you again, when you see human beings as spirits, you see them as, as, as spirits that are in a human body that have the right to operate and do things in this earth. We, we are the ones where it, it, no demon can do what they do without permission from a human. We are the ones that allow either the spirit of grace and power and truth and so forth to work through us in the earth, or we allow ourselves to be led by something that actually belongs under our foot. And I, I, I just, you know, the stench of a thing can be so bad in your house that it drives you out of the house. But then you say, no, I don't think so. It's my house and I'm driving you out of it. You see, because you and I, we have the authority and the power, but most of us don't. Many of us, I should say, maybe have need a refresher course or a beginner's course in how to use that power, how to wield the sword of the spirit, which also is the words that come forth from our mouths that are spoken uh, by first by the king. And so we say what he says, and then you have all of heaven backing it up because I, God said, watch over my word. I bring my own word to pass. So do you understand that when you say what God says, God backs up his word. You have power in your corner. Like it's the super dream team. It really is. I think we don't remember that sometimes. I think that we get into a quandary or a mess and we look at our circumstances. I'll give you an example um, in a minute, but we look at our, our, our circumstances and we think to ourselves, I don't see how I can do this. So you're actually feeding on or speaking from the kingdoms of this world. I really am going to get into teaching about the kingdoms of this world and the kingdom of our God um, as we roll on through the months. But let's go ahead and just kind of taste it or sample it a little bit. Your words are going to be sourced from one place or another. You're going to speak from the kingdom of God. Or are you going to speak from one of the kingdoms of this world? And that's just kind of the way it's going to be. So what I'm going to advise you to do, because I see a very handsome man has just joined me, is to choose wisely. I want to welcome you, Apostle Calvin, and thank you so much for being here today. Uncle Cal. <laughs> hey, let me, let, me, let me do this. Hold on. I'm going to change okay. this thing. Okay, sir. He's going to change it. So y'all hearing what I'm saying, write your questions. If you have some, write them in the um, comments so that we're able to see them. I'm going to keep talking about this stuff in a later time at any rate. So please write your questions and let's see what's going on. This is Apostle Calvin Cook. He is one of the people that I was talking about at the very beginning. I know you didn't hear me, Uncle Cal, but what I was saying is I have such great admiration for you and all of the apostles and Prophet Andrew, all the senior counsel of loving unity because of the battles that you win because of the fact that y'all are the devil that you teach others to pay attention to what's going on y'all help him set up back there and um i just i've watched you fight i've heard you speak things so matter of factly which is what he does he'll say the prayer's already been prayed we've already talked to god about it we've already heard from the lord and then he takes up his own part to do what he's already said he believes. That to me is highly admirable. It's something that you catch, you watch it, and you work in your own life to bring it to pass and to and to do the things that need to be done. So you all ready yet, sir? I uh, will be. You give me a minute. Uh, shucks. Well. I tell you what, I will but now I'm good. Okay. Sorry for the inconvenience. It's okay. Like every superhero, there was an uprising on another planet and you had to fight through stuff. Yeah, I had to. Uh, before you... Somebody put some kryptonite in front of me. I got all <laughs> kind of dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Uh, hold on. <laughs> yeah, I just got through doing another program, so I had to scuffle, shuffle. Yes, sir. I, okay. I, I, all right. Tell all right. Tell me. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Glory to God. So we're talking about the epic. Um, it's it, the epic aspects, really, of the kingdom of God. 
And so you've always got stuff to add to that. Even your folks are already saying hi to you. So, you know, I mean, you can dive in anywhere, but I, I did want to tell people something. You have a book coming out called I Sought, a, Sought for a Man, and that actually we should be able to release this week. And then also you're re-releasing another book that's called uh, The Alpha and Omega. And this this is this one, which will have the same cover. And that's also being re-released on Amazon. Uh, right. And it'll be coming to other places. And I get the honor, you know, of reading the things that you wrote and going through the journey of how you put things together. And all I can say is, like, y'all put those flames of fire up because that's exactly what this I sought for a man it's he says it's just a simple little book ah yes and like you would say my god (laughs) amen now so please um greet the folks and and let's hear what you have to say sir because I'm excited about and thank you for being here well first of all uh hello to you how you doing and everything and and I'm good I'm um yeah, I'm good. I just uh, uh, just re uh, re redoing myself. I don't like the word branding. I don't want to rebrand myself, but I want to uh, be renewed in the spirit of my mind. Uh, uh, I've never been this way before, and I, we were on the program recently. I don't know if you were on there, uh, Lanzine, but we said a couple of us said uh, we don't know what to do because we've never been this way before somebody in the background heard us and said well you guys need a prophet and i said no you didn't hear us right we didn't say we don't know what to do we said we don't know what to do because we haven't been this way before we have known what to do in the past and that's how we got to where we are now but in this new place in god uh i would hate to hear anybody say they know what to do because that tells us that maybe you got there on your own. Because if God led you to a place, he did not give you details about what to do when you got there. He said, you have to walk by faith and not by sight. And so uh, we are in a place where it's gonna take the total trust that it built on the relationship we've had with God in the past to get us on into the future today. We're going to have to walk in the total uh, blind trust, I would say, of the Lord, and so uh, that's where I'm. That's where I'm walking right now. I, I'm, I, I'm very seasoned, in terms of experience. I'm seasoned in the Word. I'm seasoned in the prayer. I'm seasoned in relationships with people, but I've never been this way before with all that seasoning on, on the meat and everything else that I've been talking about seasoning. Uh, I still don't have a road map, a, a road sign, a landmark that I could say, oh, I, this is familiar to me. Oh, I, I recognize that. The only thing, Lanzine, that I recognize is pain. It's the same as it was last year. <laughs> I, I recognize that, you know, and those type of things. But as far as... Uh, the remaking of me uh, 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 for this year, I, w- I was built last year for last year, and God is building me now for what's coming. And I can feel the construction work going on in my heart, uh, in my life, all around me. Uh, I've just lost control of everything. So that means that God wants full control of everything and so that's a good thing though i'm just waiting to see what wonderful thing he's going to do out of all this i love this what else yeah (laughs) you know know, this last month i've been teaching on the table okay that's where i've been focusing on uh and uh the reason i'm focusing there is because what i've learned about the table of the lord uh uh even though we overlook the table, uh, that table is necessary for us to get to uh, the place that uh, we're supposed to be uh, in this new creation reality to place. Uh, you know, I can get on a plane. I say, you know what? I got a ticket to Chicago and I can bet you that if I'm on the right plane, that I'm going to land in Chicago. But when you take this flight, you don't know where you're going to land. You don't know. Uh, because 
uh, it's not where you're going that God's interested in. It's, it's what you become on the way. See, he's working in you to willing to do a something. What is it of his good pleasure? Of it, he, there's, a, there's something that God wants from you in relationship to the rest of the body of Christ to be evident when you arrive at the place that you thought was your destination. When in fact, he wants you there because you're going to pre present him in a different way. And that's what he wants. He wants you and I to be a witness for him. He wants us to become, he said, I gave you power now. Those who believe, receive me. I, I gave you this power not to keep talking about me and not becoming something. So I gave you power to become Weehaas, a, a full expression of sonship, uh, of, of me, not you, not a black, not a white, not Hispanic, not Asian, but a, a spiritual quickening spirit presentation of the life of God a more accurate picture of what God really is like in you and I. That's why you go on your trips. That's why you go here or there. It isn't for the trip itself. It's for you to become something because somebody on that journey needs to see the real presentation of the life of God. Wow. And so this is part of what we need to grow up to understand that we're not branding. We're not trying to make our ministries be known. We're trying to make him known through our ministries. We're, we're trying to reveal his life and his purpose and his focus uh, in everything that we do uh, and everything that we become before him. And this happens at the table uh, of, of the Lord. You, you know? want to tell us more about the table? We'd well, like start, to hear. It, well, it starts in Psalms. Uh, that tells us that there's a table that he would present in the presence of your enemy. But he says he prepared the table. So let's just know this is something that's been prepared for you to arrive at this table. But he also tells us, and I think it's in um, Hebrews, he says, a body, he says, sacrifices and offerings, you would not. He said, that's not what you're after. You're not, you're not after sacrifices. Uh, uh, um, you know, that's not what you're after. What you're after is the body that you have prepared for me. You, you have prepared a body for me. Now, we thought it was his body at the birth of Mary under the law, but no, it's the body of Christ that he's preparing for his headship. So he can't set his headship on a body that, he said, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. And what he's saying is that the church is not ready for his governing, for his leader, for him to lead and to take away and wrestle away from them, their leadership that's led the people away from him and into systems and, and things that have caused them not to grow and mature or, or, or come to stature. Uh, they, have, they cannot be measured and be found guilty of looking like Jesus in the measurement. So, so he, th that system is flawed. And so he says, I prepared the table while, and the table is to prepare my body and so at the table, uh, you have 12 loaves of bread, which represent the 12 tribes, the 12, uh, tw the 12 tribes, the 12 miles of circumference of the camp, uh, the 12 armies that surrounded the camp to keep it, uh, uh, the 12 months of the year, the secular type of thing here, the 12 years old girl who had died, the 12 woman who suffered issues for 12 years, the number 12 is the number of fullness, but see what he's saying is that I brought you to the table so you could discover the enemy and you're gonna find out the enemy is not outside you, the enemy is in you. And those at the table is called the table of face bread. So you're gonna face your brothers and sisters and they're gonna to say to you, my brother, you offended me and you have a chance there to reconcile because as long as your brother has odd against you, you can't pray. Let me say something to the body of Christ. Most of the prayer that's going down today is not heard by God because most of the people of God got something odd against their pastor, against their brother, their sister, against their wife, against their husband, against their children. And the Bible said, if your neighbor have odd against you, put your gift down and go get right. Amen. With that individual. And if you listen to you, then you've won your brother. We don't do that. We go tell somebody else they, they offended us. So now the table's polluted. Now, when we go to prayer, God can't hear you because 
you you have disobeyed him. And it, it, he said, I command that you love one another as I have loved you. And the table is the proving ground of the love of God. We get to see everything about us. He said, if you see your brother's sin, 1 John chapter 5, verse 16. So God puts us at the table so I can actually see what's wrong with you. And you can see what's wrong with me. But if it's not the sin unto death, Lanzine, I mean, in other words, uh, it's sin that you have repented from, but you seem to have this weakness and you seem to have a problem or you may be doing something because somebody left you or you're broken hearted and you continue to do wrong things. He said, that's not the sin unto death. He said, so I would say to you, pray for them and I will give you what? Their life. So at the table, it's called the table of life. You're my brother's keeper. And so at that table, we keep each other and we become uh, in community, which causes commune. Communion causes union and union causes multiplication of the life of Christ. And so at this table, we, we produce the life of God because he's the bread of life. We partake of the bread. We, we, we feast off each other because we are the bread. And then now we can get ready to go to the next place in God, but we can't go to the next place. If there's any jealousy, envy, strife, he said, if you have any of those things in you, then you cannot enter. The next place would be the Holy of Holies. You cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And so my, my ministry right now is uh, uh, to make sure that we are operating right at the table, that we're functioning at the table. Uh, uh, and that we don't we don't misunderstand the table of the Lord. And it says many of you, he says, uh, have not discerned the Lord's body and you've eaten of the bread. And, and because you've eaten it and you didn't discern, many of you have uh, uh, been weakened and gone to sleep. And many have died early because you did not discern those at the table were handpicked by God. In first uh, Ephesians chapter one, it says, uh, you were chosen in him to be at this table before the foundation of the earth. So all these people at the table are handpicked by God. So there's nothing wrong with them. There's something wrong with you. The enemy is not in them. The enemy is in you. The enemy is, has convinced us to find accusation against those that God has chosen at, to be at the table. But those people at the table were chosen because they're the ones that could get the enemy out of you so you could vanquish your enemy. I like. I, I could go. I, I could go on with. Yeah. Oh wow, that's so good. <laughs> I think I like the part best when you say, um, "Hmm, yeah, the enemy is within." Because I can see that. I can also see to pull another scripture: the prince of this world has come, and he's found nothing in me, because he can't oh, yeah. find any of my in, 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 anger, envy, bitterness, judgment. Well, what you think? We'll find somebody else. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And the Bible says yeah. that uh, we're living sacrifices. And one of the things concerning sacrifices is they couldn't have blemishes. Mm -hmm. and, and envy and jealousy are blemishes of a living sacrifice at the table when, in fact, when you came by the cross, you were supposed to uh, be cleansed of your sin. And when you came by the water bowl, you were supposedly cleansed from yourself. And here you are at the table and you still got enemies. Yeah. And here's the danger. You cannot take an enemy of the kingdom in the presence of God. Come on. Wow. Jealousy. You cannot go to God. Tell my old father, God, you can't do that body of Christ. Yeah. You know what? I think we've seen, we, we don't see envy and jealousy and all those things as blemishes. We see a pimple, um, something that's, you know, we see physical imperfections as the, as the things that make us cause us to fall short because people spend so much time on the, on the tomb, on the out, outside, trying to make that. And yes, absolutely. Take care of ourselves and, and, and work for health. But what we do is we focus on the outward appearance of the thing and never concern ourselves. As you said, you know, I want to look good sitting at the table, but we don't think about the fact that as a spirit, it is not that physical body that's looking good. It's, it's that person. So please carry soul. on. It's the soul that, that has the blemish. OK, and you don't get to stand. You don't sit down at this table. This is a standing table. There were no chairs in the holy place. And so we have to learn to stand together before we can sit together. We have to learn how to stand together before we can walk in the light together. I noticed that God built the ark first and the second piece of furniture he built was a table of showbread. I thought he would build the candlesticks. So we could see the No, 
God says, I want to see the body before anybody else sees it. And I want to make sure it's jointly compacted, fitted together, because I placed everybody in the body as it's pleased me. Now, I want you to come to the table. I want to make sure everybody's where I placed them at the table. You ever had a big family gathering and said, well, daddy sits at the front of the table. Auntie Sue sits here. And see, that's what God did. He said every member, glory to God, every member he set in the body as it pleased him. And many of us are not in our seats. Amen. Where are we? Where are we? (laughs) We're we're hiding because we got offended. We're hiding because we offend. We're hiding because we're jealous. We're hiding because we lost control. Uh, We're hiding because we're angry about what somebody did three churches ago or last year or the year before. And we carry over to the table those things other people did to us. And we make the people that we're in relationship pay for what other people did by acting out the hurt and the pain in the present place where you are. And none of the people there caused that hurt or pain. It was your ex-husband, your third husband. How many times have you been married? <laughs> <laughs> Only once. <laughs> what I'm saying is that we're acting out familiar spirits at the table and we're projecting that pain or that thing onto the people who are coming who have the answer to the problem that you're carrying. Amen. At the table. But we won't come to the table. We, we stay back. We have a drawback spirit. We want to isolate. We want to stand off and see God says, no, I ordained you. I have handpicked you and chose you to be in the body. That's the bread represents the body of Christ. And I chose you to be in that body at this specific time. So that you, when you come to me, I won't have to re- so depart from me, you worker of iniquity, because that stuff in you was supposed to be dealt with at the cross. Wow. And at the water bowl. How did you slip past with mm-hmm. all that anger and jealousy and still inside of you and think you're going to have a prayer life? <laughs> I will not be mocked. Come on. See, God's not going to be mocked by the Christ with this generation that thinks that any, any, everything go, everything does not go. You cannot pollute the table of the Lord. That's right. And pollution means that your soul's not right. Guard your heart. That means your soul with all diligence. For out of it come the the boundaries simply mean this. Boundaries mean that if I carry a hurt from somewhere else or from a relationship or whatever, some misgiven or misplaced affection had gone wrong, then what happens is, I will create, I will treat everybody uh, uh, like that individual that hurt me. And I will create a boundary that nobody can cross because I don't trust you. I don't Mm -hmm. trust men. I don't trust women. I I don't Mm -hmm. trust the church. But see, that's a blemish in your heart. In Leviticus 21, it says there's 17 things that will keep you from being a priest and being able to minister at the table of the Lord. And one of them is broken stones. A blemish in your eye and a flat nose. Why? Because <laughs> when you have a flat nose, you can't discern the, 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 the difference between good and evil. And you have a blemish, you can't see clearly the things of the spirit. And when you have broken stones, you can't reproduce the life of Christ because the stones represent your scrotums where the sperm is produced. And you know, mm. and the word of God is the sperma. So even though the man of God is preaching at you every Sunday, you don't have the ability to reproduce what he's preaching or wow. what she's preaching. Come and, on. and the problem is every time we preach, the people of God are responsible to reproduce the message in their lives. Yes. Not break it down and say, ah, I don't, I don't like that part. What are you talking about? That's sperma. That's life. It can't return void. It, it has to prosper and accomplish and where it's been sent. All this is taking place right now at the table. God will not let us go on in 2024 with a polluted table. The table's for Luke. Yeah, yeah. Yes. He told him, he told him in Malachi. Watch what he told him. He said in Malachi 1, uh, you offer polluted bread upon my table. In other words, your bread has got leaven in it. You got something in your heart against the people at the table with you. You got something against your leader, your apostle. You got, and you're going to stand at the table and pretend like a fig tree that everything's all right. Then you think you're going to sneak into prayer and God haven't searched your heart and try to raise up every man's heart. 
<laughs> can't do it. Uh, 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 uh. He says, and the table of the Lord is contemptible, but you have com you have profaned it in that you say the table of the Lord is polluted and the fruit thereof, even this meat, is contemptible. And so what's happened here, uh, we have to be careful because, and then watch this, in Luke, Jesus is at the Last Supper. Watch this. Watch what he says. And so Jesus at the Last Supper in, in Luke 22, 21, he says this, but behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me uh, is with me at the table. So mm -hmm. as we go to the table of the Lord in, in Psalm 21, whose hand is on the table that's going to betray God by not being rightly related with the ones he chose to be with you? Who will, which one of us is going to betray the Lord at his table? That's which so one good. Yeah. Who, who is it going to be? Is it me? I and that's the only question. Is it me? I yeah, is it me? Did I have to come back and ask God to forgive me for saying them? Me too. Yeah. Amen. Is, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So, I love so, that. So it, it's very important that we understand that. Um, and also he says, wherefore, uh, whoever shall eat this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. He said, listen, if you get to the table and you hate somebody at the table, you disdain somebody at the table, you belittle somebody at the table, you don't respect that part of the Bible, the table, when God says, bestow more honor upon the less comely parts of the body, the, the most, the ones that aren't beautiful, the ones that normally don't, he said, put more honor on them and you can't honor the ones that have honored you. He says, then you better not eat this bread because if you eat of the bread unworthily, uh, did you hear me? You should be guilty of the body and the blood of, uh, of the Lord. But let each man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread. Only after you examine yourself at the table. Lord, re renew a right spirit, give me a clean heart. You got to check yourself before you wreck yourself at the table. See? Because it's the table of the Lord. It's, it, I remember when David, uh, one scripture I was reading, it says, the king's table was there. But the seat that David sat in was empty. In other words, the Lord didn't attend that that supper because because the table was polluted with religion, with uh, 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 other things that, that that were not in sync with the pattern of the Lord. And so the king David couldn't sit at that table because javelins were being thrown at him. Because there was a war in the house of David, and there was a war in the house of Saul, and that war was between systems of righteousness and unrighteousness. Are you saying what I'm saying? That's Hearts that, that were polluted with jealousy. De David, uh, Saul killed a thousand, but David slew tens of thousands. And, and the spirit of jealousy came upon Saul when he heard David being heralded as greater than him. But he got angry and the spirit of jealousy came upon him. Can I ask you to do something? Because we're right at the end of the broadcast. And besides the fact, Uncle Calvin, that I really... Um, want you to come back one more time before I switch over into the new platform that I'm going to do later this year, please come back. Okay. okay. But I to, uh, <laughs> thank you. But I want to ask you, this is, you are also truly an intercessor and we need the prayers. I believe the apostolic and prophetic releases that help us to hear this word being released and the actions, the the orders that are that are coming. Would you pray for us before we uh, before we say bye bye today? Well, I am I am I am a, a burden uh, as um, as I see us in a hurry yes, sir. to do something for God, and we haven't become something yet. Yes, that, sir. That bothers me. That right uh, there. That Ooh. bothers me. That bothers me because everybody wants to go do something. They want to go preach. They want to prophesy. They want a platform. They want a brand. They want a website. They want this. They want a YouTube page. Everybody wants to have something to say, but they don't want to be with you and they don't want to be with me. They don't want any oversight. They don't want to meet at the table. They don't recognize that there is a table. They don't recognize it's the table of communion. It's the table of community. It's the table of unity. And then we come in union. And once we have union, then we can multiply. Father, I declare that we would wake up, thou that sleepeth, and rise. Come out of the dust and rise. The dust means your mind has been dusted with earthly concepts and 
earthly doctrines and earthly living styles and that thing. It says, arise out of the dust and God will give you rest. And so, Father, I declare uh, right now, and I, and I say, Father God, there's going to be a turnaround and you're not going to have to overturn these tables of the money changes. We're not going to do anything that brings shame to the table. Lord, we're going to stand at the table until we're strong enough to sit in you in heavenly places and legislate the things that we learned at the table. We're going to learn that we're kings and priests together. There's nobody that's a slave to anyone at that table, Father God. We're going to break the mentality of imperialism. We're going to break the mentality of somebody's less than I am. We're going to break the mentality of, of somebody has to do this to gain my respect. God, each one of us, God, has been hand chosen by God to stand at the table of the Lord, to stand in the presence of a living God, to go forth and show the glory of his kingdom. Father, I pray that you give us dignity at least enough to repent and reconcile and be renewed in the spirit of our mind that we might walk together to prove that we love the love of God is in us, that you might know that we are your disciples, Father, by how we love at the table one another. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, as you reconfigure our thinking and bring us to a greater understanding of our purpose. In Jesus' mighty name. My God. Yes. As one that is of this body, I receive this, Father. I say, yes, be it unto us. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Father. Thank you. Oh, my God. I'm like ready to cry. I have to say, please, please, people, if you are in San Jose, um, February 9th and 10th, the, the San Jose Convergence, this man of God and all of the rest, it, it's just so necessary to be in the midst of the prayers. And I get to hug my Uncle Cal, which I'm excited about. Um, I I don't want to do all the commercials, Joe Henry, just you know what to do. It's so important. Take this word. And it's not good for, oh, so-and-so needs to hear it. I needed to hear this. I was brought to hear this word, to let this word do in me what the Spirit of God wants done. It's necessary. You said something, Apostle Calvin, right at, at the um, top of what you were saying. You said last year, the, and I'm not going to quote it properly, but I'll get the, the, the gist of it. What you went through last year, you had in you last year to do. But what you're doing this year, it's something new. It's something you, you're being equipped. We're all being equipped to go through 2024 with the weapons for 2024, not 2023. And the spirit of that to stop acting like we know what we don't know. And you said to also acting like a fig tree. We has no fruit on it. So please, you all watch his broadcast, the things that he does here on Kingdom First TV. Please, please, please. I implore you. Pay attention to what the Spirit of God is saying through his apostle about his table. We need to hear this. We need to yield to this. And we need to allow ourselves to be taught and then to be changed. Is there anything else? That, that's really it. And also I want to say Prophet Margie Florent is on at 6 o'clock p.m. The Art of Intercession, I believe is the name of her program. 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is more to pray, more to speak. We've got to say what God says and stop saying our own little vain opinions. That's what this apostle came, I believe, to release and is received. I know where uh, I'm Yeah, the, we're, in, we're in a critical time. Uh, and I noticed that when David spread a table, uh, those who were hiding in the cave came to the table and they became his mighty men of valor. And so if we allow the table to do what the table's designed to do, it's help us defeat the enemies that are in us. Because the Bible says those men were in debt. They were disfranchised. They were, they were just messed up. But when they came to David, they became mighty men. Amen. And so when we come to the table, we go forward as a mighty man, not a mighty man. But we come forward as a son of God, uh, a, a corporate son of God. Because first there are 12 loaves, and when we finish praying, there's only one loaf. Okay. It's the bread of life. I pray that they be one. And at the table is where we become one. Now our intercession goes to another level because we're not praying individually. We're praying along with the Son of God in a corporate intercession prayer meeting with him. Now if two of you are praying together, 
then in agreement, then there's nothing that cannot be done. And the amen goes right there. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Apostle Calvin Cook, for being here. Um, Sorry, I'm, I was running late. It's all right. You were on time as far as I'm concerned. Ladies and gentlemen, this was an epic conversation about the kingdom of God. It's never just a conversation. It is a kingdom conversation. My name is Lindsay Lee. We have been graced with the presence of Apostle Calvin Cook. And I want to thank you all again. And we'll see you next time. Bye. All right. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you for watching Kingdom First TV.